Hello, this is Dan Lemke. Today's article, the third in the series, is about multiple buyers that are involved in making decisions in a complex sale. The discussion is what you should expect to see happen during a complex sale and what you should do or could do. We're going to discuss phase one of selling in a complex environment. In the October-November newsletter, we discuss the shifting concerns of individuals that make buying decisions, but today we're going to talk about not only a single person involved in making a decision, but multiple people who are involved in making decisions. So let's start over with what goes on with individuals and how they work together. The idea for this article is to talk about getting multiple buyers through what we call Phase 1. So for this article, we're making an assumption that a buyer and or buyers have become aware that they should consider doing something differently than they're doing today. So let's go through the analysis of what may happen during a complex decision cycle. So as we discussed in our previous article, the vertical line here indicates the level of individual concern that buyers feel as they begin to make decisions. On the x-axis is the total time it takes for a buying decision, in this case a complex buying decision, and I label that because there are multiple buyers that need to be dealt with whether you're there or not to make a decision. So if you remember in our previous article, we talked about the phases that the buyer goes through as they make a decision. So let's talk in a little bit of detail about what happens when we meet the first buyer. Number one. Arrange a telephone or in-person meeting with that buyer. Let's say it's 45 minutes to an hour. Number two, send an email with suggested agenda. Gain agreement about what the agenda will be before the meeting occurs. Number three, hold that initial meeting and discuss, as we mentioned before, needs, issues, and potential solutions that may work for that buyer. Document that meeting in an email or letter with agreement to discuss it once you produce the document. Gain agreement on the solution as you have that discussion when you write the letter or email and discuss which next steps should be taken. During that discussion, if you feel it's needed in a complex sale, gain access to other key buying members and arrange to have those meetings. And then gain agreement on a solution meeting after you have those interviews. Okay, let's make an assumption that your meeting with key member number one went well, and in the discussion of the letter, either there was a request by you to meet other key members, or the a buyer, key member number one, offered access to other people. So we, in fact, want to meet key member number two. If you notice, there's an offset in time here. The buying process for buyer number two, or key member number two, didn't start because we may not have met them yet. However, it's very common that if we have a good meeting with key member number one and write a letter, I've seen in many cases where the letter that was written to key member number one is shared with key member number two and other key members before you ever even meet them. But let's make an assumption that they really don't get into their phase one until we meet them. So what do we do? Well, number one, we want to review the letter and arrange the meeting that was written to key member number one. When we have the meeting, we'd like to discuss that they agree with the letter or not. This is where we begin to either align buyers or we begin to find that there's dissonance or disagreements. We'd also like to gather what their needs, issues, and potential solution may be. We'd like to then gain agreement on next steps that key member number two might want to go through. We find often in complex sales that when we meet other key members, there are other steps that they would like to see taken as they become part of a buying committee. And then lastly, we'd like to document in a letter or email to key member number two what was discussed and then call to confirm the accuracy of that letter. So after meeting key member number one and key member number two and documenting both conversations, we ask for and receive a meeting with key member number three. The idea then is to help that person get through phase one, which is determining what their needs are and a potential solutions. So we arrange the meeting either by phone, by email, and we review the letters that were written to key member number one and key member number two. 
determine if there's agreement with those letters. This is a good time to determine if things are beginning to line up in the buyer's minds or if there is a disagreement among the key members that may be involved in making a complex decision. As with number one and number two, discuss the needs, the issues, and potential solution that key member number three may have. Now, anywhere along the line here, you may find that they don't have needs that are critical to a decision being made, but yet they're still involved in helping other key members make their decision. So we need to act accordingly and situationally as we discover what's going on in this complex sale. We want to gain agreement then on the next steps with number three, as well as having gained agreement with number two and key member number one. And then again, we document that letter in an email or a letter and call to confirm it's accurate. So in this particular buying process, we've had an opportunity to meet with three key members that may be involved in making a decision to buy from us or not. We've also made an assumption in this discussion that we've gotten each member through phase one. However, I've simplified this whole discussion. It could take longer. It could take multiple meetings to get everybody through phase one. If you remember, though, in the beginning when I, we talked to key member number one, we gained agreement that there would be a solution meeting after we had those interviews. So the circle here designates that we've reached the end of that, and we're going to ask for and hopefully get a solution meeting. So what do we do during this solution meeting? Well, number one, we want to review the business needs that we discovered as we interviewed key member number one, key member number two, and key member number three. We'd like to review the impediments that they see to reaching their needs, whether those needs are goals or they are problems they're facing. We'd like to review the value. If you remember an article that we wrote in October, November 2009, we discussed that it's extremely important to gain value, agreement on value or discover value in phase one with each individual key member that you meet. We'd like to review capabilities that we may be able to provide that can help them remove the business impediments that keep them from reaching their business needs. At some point towards the end of the meeting, we want to gain agreement with each of the individual key members that the solutions we're discussing, in fact, will help them meet their needs. At that point, then, the discussion about next steps should take place. So this is really the end of our discussion on phase one, but let's make an assumption that we do get the opportunity to move forward into what we've called phase two. Let's review what we've talked about in this article. First of all, we've met key member number one. We've gone through discussion with them regarding their needs, any impediments to meeting their needs, the solutions they think they may need, and hopefully during that discussion we've helped them see value. We've written them a letter, and either they have volunteered access to other people or we've asked for access, and we were given that access. So we then meet key member number two. Now, one of the tactics I recommend using is that you ask key member number one to share the letter that was written with key member number two and key member number three. When we have that meeting, then we review the letter that was written to the first member and we discuss their needs. After we've met with key member number two, we write them a letter and then we ask them to send that letter to key member number one and key member number three. We then meet with key member number three, and we then have a very same discussion we've talked about before, which is we understand what their needs are, the impediments to reaching their needs, and capabilities or solutions they feel would be important. And once we've had that conversation, we write a letter to them and ask them to share that letter with key members number two and key members number one. What can happen in that regard is that as they each see the letters written to the others, there may be an alignment in terms of needs. So at the solution meeting, we may have an opportunity to see that the key members of the buying process are in alignment or not. In our next article, we'll talk more details about the tactics of being in phase one in a multiple buying environment, and we'll also talk about phase two. If you'd like to talk to us about key details on tactics and strategies in selling in a complex environment, please give us a call. We look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day.